10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hello, I'm Dr. Roger L. Green, Sr., pastor and founder of Prayer and Deliverance Worldwide Ministry. Thank you for tuning in again to our broadcast. We are here today, Perch, for a word from the Lord. There is a word from the Lord. The Bible said he sent his word and it healed them. Your healing is going to come through the blessed word of God. And I'm so glad that you are able to join us on today. So God bless you as I prayer in Jesus' name. We want to get right into the word. I'm so excited. I hope you are excited too, because when two of us get together and everybody's excited about the word of God, God will move like never before. And so I'm expecting a great move of God during this broadcast. And I just pray that something will be said that will uh, encourage your heart and encourage you and motivate and inspire you to continue to live for the Lord. All right. So let's get into the word today. I want to talk to your hearts from Micah chapter number seven, verse number seven through verse number nine. Micah chapter number seven, verse seven through verse nine. And the word of God is recorded in the Holy Writ and is read in the synagogue on the Sabbath as thus. I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. All right. I want to talk to you for just a little while from verse number eight, where the scripture says, when I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. I want to talk about night vision. I want to talk about night vision. This is today uh, is uh, Palm Sunday. And uh, it's the day when Jesus rode into Jerusalem, sitting on the coat of a donkey, and the people lined his pathway, and uh, they lined it with palm leaves, and they chanted as he went about his way, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Uh, this Hosanna being interpreted, save us now, Lord. This occasion could not have come at a more appropriate time because if the world ever needed a savior, we need one now with what's going on in the world. It's never been more appropriate than now and never been more true than now. Uh, it would be preposterous for me to continue to uh, give you the uh, headline statistics and the numbers and, and all of this with what's going on with the coronavirus, I think everyone by now is aware of the mess that the world is in, uh, that we are facing. And uh, the only one that can fix what's wrong is the one who created the world. And so the one who has sustained it, the one who has uh, kept it from the very beginning is the one that's going to have to fix this. And so it doesn't matter now whether uh, you give him credit uh, or whether you, uh, you, you don't give him credit. After all, we need him. He don't need us. And so we have to understand uh, who needs who. And so the writer says in verse number seven, I will look unto the Lord. 
I will wait for the God of my salvation. Uh, some, uh, some people don't like waiting. Uh, most people don't like waking up. I, I don't really know anybody who have ever told me they're in love with waiting. But uh, there are times in our lives that we just have to wait on the move of God. We have to wait until God gets ready to deliver us. And so the writer said, I wait for the God of my salvation because my God will hear me. And so we have to have that assurance. We must have that confidence that he that shall come will come and that we're not waiting in vain. We're not waiting for nothing, but in due time, God will move and he will move in our behalf. And so we have to understand that. So if you really have that assurance, you can wait patiently for our God. Don't have, uh, don't have to be anxious, uh, nor get all giddy. You know, some people get giddy. They get tired of waiting. You have to be careful now about getting tired of waiting. Because oftentimes when people get tired of waiting, they have a tendency to want to take things and matters into their own hands. I wouldn't advise you to do that with this one because I believe that this is a very serious matter and we must take it with all the seriousness that we can muster and do those things that we need to do to remain safe, to remain protected, to protect ourselves as well as our families. Because you have to understand that right now your behavior not only affects you, but everyone that you come in contact with. And so we have to be mindful uh, that, uh, that, uh, that we can't be selfish in the notion of what we're dealing with. We must have confidence that whenever God is ready, he will release us from being on house arrest. Uh, yeah, we, we're on house arrest now because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. God has got us all on lockdown, got us on house arrest, and we have to accept that as the uh, preeminence of the Almighty God. And so because um, uh, God is the one that is orchestrating things and, and, and handling things, you ought to rejoice and be glad that he's got us on house arrest because at least uh, we have a sentence. Uh, uh, glory be to God. And, and because you have a sentence, that means that if it's not a death sentence, that sooner or later you're going to get out. Somebody ought to say something. Sooner or later, I'm coming out of this. Sooner or later, God is going to release us from this condition that we're facing. And so I don't have to, I don't have to worry. I don't have any death sentence anymore. I don't know about you, but when I went down in water, in ba of baptism, when I went down in Jesus' name, my sentence was commuted from death to life, and I rose to walk in the newness of life, and therefore, no matter how dark times may seem, how dark times may be, I still have hope in God. Lamentation 3 and 21 and 22 said, This I recall to my mind. Therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. I will hope in him, he is my portion. God has to be your portion. When God is your portion, you won't want for anything. When God is your portion, he takes care of you. He provides for you. When God is your portions, you'll be satisfied with him. That's why the songwriter said, I'm satisfied with Jesus. I'm satisfied with him. Said he be my comforter. Said he be my God. Been baptized in Jesus' name. Tied around the altar till the Holy Ghost came. And ever since that wonderful day, my soul has been satisfied with Jesus. You ought to still be satisfied with him. No matter what kind of epidemic, what kind of pandemic, what comes our way, if you are satisfied, you're satisfied. That means that you're not lacking anything. That means that you are totally and completely content with what you have. And so if you're satisfied with Jesus, you ought to be satisfied with being at home. You ought to be satisfied in thanking 
thanking God and that you have a home or a place to go to ride this thing out. And so God bless you as our prayer in Jesus' name. When everything is dark around me or dismal, he gives me night vision. He gives me the place where I can see the ability to see clearly even though it's dark. In his word, he said, when I sit in darkness, he shall be a light unto me. No matter where I'm going, no matter what I'm doing, he's still a light unto my path. And so here's what you have to understand. If you go outside in the middle of the day and you look up at the sky, you won't see the stars. You won't see the stars. Uh, uh, but let me tell you this. Uh, but if you get into a bucket and let someone let you down into the middle of the well, y'all don't hear me, ah, glory, and where it's dark at, and you look up, then you're able to see the stars because of the light that shines through the opening. And so no matter where I find myself, no matter what I find myself in, what condition I find myself in, I still have light. The stars are still shining, whether you can see them or not. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back. Glad you're still with us. Before we went to break, we we're talking about being in the middle of the well. We're in the middle of the well now. And if you're a child of God, uh, all you have to do is look up and live. The stars are still shining. The light is still shining. Jesus is the light. He is the light of the world and he's ever shining in our hearts. And dear hearts, you have to know that he is still shining in our hearts, regardless of what you're facing, regardless of what we are going through. We must continue to rejoice and be thankful and be glad because of what God has done for us and because of who he is in our life. You got to rejoice. You ought to tell the enemy, rejoice not against me. You see, because uh, he thinks that uh, things are looking bad now. He thinks that he have uh, gotten you discouraged and, and, and you're going to take your eyes off of God, that you're going to slack up on serving him. Oh, no. Amen. The devil is a liar. Amen. We're going to get worse and we're going to serve God like never before because now you ain't got to worry about who looking at you. You can shout all around your living room. You can shout all through the house right now. You can give God all the praise you want to give God. You could even be shouting John now because you're in your own habitat and you ought to feel more comfortable in your own home than anywhere else. And the enemy ought not to be able to make you shy or nervous in your own surrounding. And so you ought to clap your hand, rejoice, and be glad, and give God some praise for having tucked you amen, into a safe place, into a safe environment, so that you can give him praise. Amen. The enemy thought that, well, he can rejoice because I got you just where I want you. You can't go anywhere. You can't do anything. You've been shut down. Amen. Your mouth have been closed. Amen. That's where the enemy is wrong. He may think he has me where he go, 
wants me, but in fact, he got me where I want to be. Glory be to God. In a place where I can give God some glory. Amen. And there's a difference between having me where he wants me and being where I want to be. And so therefore, I'm in Christ. I'm still giving God the praise. Amen. I haven't left. Amen. My position. I have not left my faith. I have not left the place of holiness. And so therefore, the enemy has made no inroad. He has made no progress in our life. I can praise God all day and all night. He has relieved us from the alarm clock and you ought to give God some praise because you can go take a nap just as soon as you get through praising God. You ought to dance and shout all through the house. You ought to anoint your dope ports. You ought to anoint your house. You ought to pray over your home, pray over your children, pray over your dog, pray over your pets, pray over your toys, pray over your computer, pray over everything that, com that belongs to you, that pertains to you and put the enemy out and when you get ready to put him out, open the door and give him a swift kick and let him go on out, amen, and rejoice and be thankful and give God the praise because God has not, amen, given me over to death. I'm still here. I'm still giving God the praise so you can tell the enemy he has no victory. I'm still here as long as I can praise God that he has no victory as long as I can give glory unto him of whom I have to do. He has no victory. We have the victory because remember Remember now, this is Palm Sunday. This is the Sunday when Jesus walked into Jerusalem, amen, rode into Jerusalem, sitting on a donkey's coat, and they were, uh, uh, they were contentious about whether or not he would even show up, amen. But he showed up, and any time he show up, he shows out. Because he is the God of our salvation. He is the maker and creator of all things. And I'm so glad I've already bowed to him. And before it's over, every knee shall bow to him. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. You ought to be happy and thankful and glad that you've already bowed. If you've been baptized in his name, filled with the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, according to Acts chapter 2, verse 36, let all the house of Israel know that the same Jesus whom you have crucified is both Lord and Christ. Therefore, it goes on down to verse two, uh, 38. He said, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of of the Holy Ghost. Amen. You got to have the water and you got to have the spirit according to St. John chapter 3 verse 1 through 8. Amen. When Nicodemus, when Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again of the water and of the spirit. It's a two-part salvation and you can't get around that. You must come through the door. Amen. Anyone that comes up any other way is a thief and a robber. And so thief and robbers are not going to make it in. So you got to come the right way. Repent of your sins. Ask God to forgive you of your sins. Ask God, amen, to fill you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost and then subject yourself to be baptized by a man of God, amen, in water by submersion, not sprinkling, by submersion, and God will fill you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost that he has promised you according to the scriptures. I can praise God all day long now, amen. I am excited and full of joy. Amen. Nehemiah 8 and 10 says that the joy of the Lord is my strength. If the joy of the Lord is my strength and I get enough joy, I can step on the devil's head. He has no victory over me. Listen, a saint has no business having anxiety attacks because of a pandemic, because of this pandemic. We're nowhere near what happened in 1918 after World War II. Amen. Uh, three times as many people who died in World War II died in the pandemic of, of, of um, uh, uh, 1918. And so we are nowhere near that. And so God has still been merciful. You must find the hand of God in every aspect of your life and realize that God has still been good and merciful to us. Amen. And so we have to understand that. And so no matter what the enemy say, yeah, he's telling uh, many of you, uh, what if you don't make it through this pandemic? Uh, but, but God has already gotten you the victory. Uh, what are you worried about? You already have the victory. All you got to do is shout. Glory be to God. He, he is my strength and he is 
my song. He is a very present help in the time of trouble. Amen. You must understand trouble don't last always. And until you are able to uh, endure trouble, uh, you, your, your salvation have not been really solidified anyway. Because uh, until you've had some trouble, uh, you really don't know how you're going to respond under pressure. But I come to let you know that this ought not to be your first rodeo. Amen. If you've been saved a long time, this isn't, shouldn't be your, your first rodeo. You are, you've had trouble before. Amen. And God brought you through it. Amen. And so we don't have to get all nervous now. God is going to bring us through. He knows what he's doing. He knows when to, to deliver us. He knows when to establish us. He knows all the, he has all the timing elements, all the mechanisms. He knows everything about what we need, when we need, how we need it. And not only that, I want to share a little testimony with you. Uh, today I was uh, going through some things and I was looking for uh, some antibacterial soap uh, that uh, I had uh, stored away a little while ago. And uh, not because of the occasion, not, not thinking that, not knowing that the occasion was even coming. But I, I went to, to, to um, get it and to pull it out, and, and I was having to reach over some things to, to find it and everything, and, and, and I was reaching and, and I was stretching to find it and everything, and, 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 and then God uh, spoke to me. He said, what are you doing? And, and I said, uh, uh, I'm looking for the soap, Lord. He said, uh, are you out of soap? And I said, no, Lord. He said, well, haven't I provided everything you need? I said, yes, Lord. And I got out of there. I said, well, you know, I don't need it right now. I'll come back when I need something. Glory be. That's what I'm saying to you. If God has met your need, if God has prepared for you everything that you need to be comfortable in the midst of this and you're just not able to rip and run and do your crazy stuff that you've been doing and God has got to shut down at home. It's for a reason. It's for a reason. You don't know if you had kept going on the same path. You don't know if you might not have had a stroke, a heart attack, blood pressure might have went through the roof. Uh, you, you don't. Diabetes may have showed up in your life. You, you don't know what God has spared us of by just slowing us down long enough to where we can smell the roses. Slowing us down long enough where we can have some reflection and introspection to look over things. And, and, and some of us, we, we've cleaned out our closets. We've cleaned up our house. We've straightened up our yard. We've done everything that we God has been beneficial. And, and, and so, therefore, we ought to thank God. We ought to thank God that we got something done that we didn't have to stressfully do it we could take our time and just enjoy what you're doing. We'll be right back after this. In 2008, me and my husband lost over a half a million dollars. Yes, over a half a million dollars. We almost lost our home. The sheriff, as a matter of respect, was coming into our, was coming to our house and uh, a lawyer called and told us that he was on his way. And for what he said, he was working it out and don't worry, he'll take care of it. I mean, it had got so bad, we didn't know what we was gonna eat. And this was during the time that we was pastoring, teaching people, pouring into people, loving people. We never complained about what we were going through. We never told people what we were going through because we trusted God. So it's very important. If you're gonna trust somebody, trust for them. Trust, trust them and go all the way. We trust God and I'm telling you, God blessed us. He brought us out, he restored us. I mean, it's just amazing. We never, ever was hungry. We never, ever did, couldn't pay our bills. Yeah, they may not have been on time, but we was able to pay our bills. We was able to minister every Sunday, go to Bible study on Wednesday, feed the sick, clothe the naked, do everything for everybody else. So that's another thing. Stop thinking about yourself. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. Oh, no. Oh, excuse me. I must have thought I was in the church. Girl, I'm over here like <laughs> free. <laughs> but stop thinking about yourself. You got to think about somebody greater than yourself. You got to serve somebody greater than yourself. And for me, it was Jesus. He was much more greater than me. So I stopped crying about my mother being killed when I was 15. I stopped crying about don't nobody love me, don't nobody care. I stopped crying that my daddy killed my mother and I don't have a dad. I stopped crying because I couldn't be with my brothers and sisters. I stopped crying because I didn't have the money or the education that I wanted. I stopped crying and I took up my bed and walked. 
It's a scripture in the Bible where it talks about a man that was sick for 38 years. And the Lord asked him, will you take up your bed and walk? And he started complaining. And that's number. That's another one. Stop complaining. He started complaining. Lord, you know, they won't put me in the pool. It was a pool that everybody got healed if they could get in the pool once a year. You know, it was, the, and then he was just complaining about every year I come up here for 38 years, Lord, and nobody won't put me in the pool. So the Lord told him, take up your bed and walk, honey. And that's what I'm telling somebody now. Stop complaining. Take up your bed and walk. And what God was basically saying, walk out of that situation. You don't have to be in the shape that you're in. The father want to put you back together again. So the man, he got up and he walked and he was made whole. So I'm talking to somebody that you got to be made whole. I know we're going through some stuff right now. We and Some of us have lost our jobs. Some of us have almost have lost our marriages because we, we with them every day. You ain't even used to being with them every day. You ain't used to being with the kids every day. Come on, let's be real. It ain't all that it ain't, it ain't all that goodness going on. We know about that, but we know that God allowed this to happen so we can get back in alignment. Mm -hmm. Some of us have just got out of alignment. We just didn't have time for God, didn't have time for our family, didn't have time for our kids, didn't have time for others. It was all about you. Now, it's not all about us anymore. We're all on the same level, whether you white, black, rich, or poor. God shut us down so we can get ourselves together. And this is a perfect time for those of you that don't have jobs, about to lose your job, or threatening to start trying to build something on, on what you need to build on so you can have some income coming in from your family. It's very important. I thank God. It was not but the grace of God that told me and my husband that we need to have some multiple streams of income. Don't put all your money in one basket. If we hadn't had the, the income that we had, the multiple streams for income, when we lost a half a million dollars and all, and almost lost our company. As a matter of fact, we lost two of our companies, but we thank God we had multiple streams of income that we could pull from. Yeah, people laughed at us because they say that here they go again with something else to sell. Well, you, that's okay. You didn't have to be in my team. You didn't have to be, you know, on my side and you didn't have to support because you know what? Other people supported and we were able to pour into other people. Then some of them became very wealthy in some of the, the businesses that we were in. And that's what we were called to do, I believe, to pour into others, to help others, to pull others up out of poverty. You don't have to be in the shape that you're in. And now somebody got to be shaken and get yourself together. Stop crying. Wipe your tears. It's going to be all right, baby. God got something for you. If you had it for me, he got it for you. Lift up your heads, oh you gates, and be ye ever lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and let the King of glory come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord God Almighty is the King of glory. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I don't know what you do, but that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. the pro 
Welcome back. We're talking about night vision. I want to talk about night vision for just a little bit. Uh, night vision is the ability to see into darkness, night vision. Uh, we, we used to have um, gargles that were called night vision gargles. And, and what we could do with night vision gargles, uh, we could go on patrol uh, in pitch black darkness and be able to see where we're going and be able to see the enemy also. Uh, so when you have night vision, you have the ability to see even in midnight, even in what you're going through, you have the ability to see your way out. 
you have the ability to see God bringing you out. I don't know who I'm talking to today, amen, but you ought to have some night vision. And I'm not talking about the day or the night. I'm talking about problems and situations and troubles, situations and circumstances that you might be going through that the enemy is trying to get you to believe that you'll be stuck and you're never going to get out of it because he's got some people believing that this, what we're going through now, is going to be permanent. But I come to let you know today that this too shall pass because God have the antidote. God have the key. He's just waiting on somebody to get right. Tell your neighbor, could that, could that somebody be you? Amen. It doesn't matter who it is. Whenever they get right, God's going to bring us through this thing. God says in Psalm 35, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. What do I care about going through the night if I can still see? Amen. If I can see just as good in the nighttime as I can see in the daytime, ah, oh, glory. What do I care about it being night? Because I'm able to be sufficient in what God has given me at all times. And that's what you ought to rejoice in. That's what you ought to be thankful for. That's what you ought to. Listen, it's time now to relegate this thing to God and say, God, uh, I, I, there's nothing I can do to change the situation. So I'm going to be happy and thankful because there are some things that could have happened before this event that would have put me on a different posture. But God, you didn't see fit to let none of these things be. Let me tell you something. Two days before this pandemic was announced, we received a building permit to build our new church sanctuary and was about to start construction was about to, 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 to get a job started and bring in materials and stuff like that. And, and, and if we had waited until uh, we got into construction and then they announced this pandemic, we would have had materials that could have been stolen, could have been uh, uh, vandalized, could have been pilfered, and all of that kind of stuff. A, a delay uh, could have been uh, uh, damaged to our foundation through rain and weather and that kind of thing. But God saw fit to, 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 to put everything on hold two days beforehand. And so this is what we have to be thankful for. God knows where we are. He knows what we're dealing with, what we're going through. All you have to do is trust him. This is a trust shakedown. This is a trust shakedown. We're going to find out now how much you trust him. We all talk about how we trust God. We'll find out how much you trust him now because of what we're dealing with. And so we want to continue that. And your prayer should be, Lord, help me to hold on. Lord, help me to hold on until my change has come. No matter what the enemy tries to bring you away, no matter what he's trying to tell you, it's too late. He's too late. God hasn't gotten to you now. It's too late for him to be whispering in your ear now. God's got you. And all you got to do is just continue, amen, to live holy and doing what's right in the eyes of God. Be obedient to his word, to his lead, and you're going to be all right. You've been to the water, you've been baptized, and you ought to feel all right. Amen. Anybody feel all right? You ought to give God some praise because when I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Clap your hands and give God some praise. You ought to get up out of your seat and walk around your house and just demonstrate to the enemy how free you are that you can clap your hands and give God some praise. You ought to just talk to God. You ought to just have relationship with him right there in the comfort of your own house. Amen. They say this is virtual church, but I don't know anything about in a virtual church. I don't know how to have virtual church. Either you having church or you not having church. So if we having church, you ought to give God some praise. You ought to thank God. You ought to shout with the voice of triumph and be thankful unto him that have brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Clap your hand and thank him, saints. It's important for us to do that. 
Glory be to God. Walk around your house and give God some thanks. Oh, glory. Uh, you ought to just thank God for your children. Thank God that they're safe. Thank God your husband's safe, your family's safe, and, 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 and all of that. Uh, because, listen, uh, people are losing loved ones and not even able to pay their last respects. But God is still having mercy. I lost a cousin, a second cousin on this week and was not able to go to the funeral. Uh, but, but I just thank God for the memories. I can rejoice in the memories that I have of her, uh, uh, the vision of the last time I saw her, and, and, and I can let that be my memory. And so I'm thankful to God that God still is in control. God is still in charge. And so we thank God for him. So continue to pray for those who uh, have loved ones that have gone on to be with the Lord and not able to pay your last rites. There'll be time for memorials. Uh, when uh, this danger uh, has passed, it's, uh, I'm so reminded of the night uh, that the death angel came through Egypt and Israel was locked in and could not come outside. Uh, but they, they didn't get impatient. Uh, they had a feast. They had a party going on on the inside. Amen. You need to start your Holy Ghost party instead of a watch party. Amen. And, and you start your Holy Ghost party because the Holy Ghost party don't stop. And you can, you can party with the Lord to the end of this whole pandemic, to everything is gone. The coast is clear and everything is back to normal if you just continue to praise God and don't get caught up on the time. So God bless you. Amen. Heaven smile upon you. May God keep you to a brighter day. Don't forget, amen, uh, those of you who are members of Prayer and Deliverance Worldwide, to go to pdtministries.org, amen, where you can uh, uh, contribute your tithes and offering. And if you are watching this ministry and want to be a supporter, you want to support this ministry, and this ministry has been a blessing to you, you can go to pdtministries.org. Also, there's a there's a uh, icon there that says donate. Click on donate. It's a tutorial. It'll walk you through the process, and God will bless you, Amen, and keep you. We're also available uh, for giving on Givelify if you would like to support this ministry financially. That if it has been a blessing to you, so God bless you. That's about all I have for right now, Amen. Uh, I want you to understand that. This is not the end. We're still giving God the praise. We're still saved. We're still living holy. We're still walking in the light as he is in the light. And we must understand that God is going to deliver us and he's going to do it. And he's going to do it right early. But remember what the prophet Micah says, I will wait. Glory be to God. I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Just like he did Israel when he told Moses, the cries of my people has come up to me and I am come down to see about them. Stay encouraged. Stay safe. Stay saved. Stay holy. God bless you. See you on the next time.